How's it going everybody, Fuji here, and today I will be discussing how to install vinyl wrap on your vehicle's molding or trim. Now, I have made a quick video of this process and its installation, but nothing too specific. Therefore, I want to take the time now and show a more thorough process on correct vinyl installation. The trims that I will be installing the vinyl on will be from this BMW E90. And I do want to mention that this video will specifically show the installation process of placing wrap on a detachable trim or molding. I will not be showing the disassembly of the molding itself. However, I have made a separate video on that subject from this specific car, which I will include a link in the description box down below. Now, before I get into the installation process itself, the first thing one will always want to do is clean the surface area. What I generally like to use myself is 90% or higher rubbing alcohol, as the alcohol will evaporate almost instantly, allowing you to apply the wrap pretty much right away. Now, here's some common mistakes that a lot of people make that you should probably stay away from. Number one, don't use acetone. Unfortunately, I've seen some people use acetone on their cars and it's not pretty. It definitely dries quicker than alcohol, but it's gonna take some pain along with it as well. You don't want that. Secondly, some people don't wanna spend that extra couple dollars and buy rubbing alcohol, and therefore select to use water or even Windex which is fine. However, if you use those types of liquids, you're gonna have to wait a few minutes, maybe even longer, to allow those fluids to dry. And in between that time, you never know what's gonna sit on your car. The tiniest little pebble will show on your vinyl and it's extremely annoying because it'll make your job look really cheap. Take for example this ground here. Your eyes might catch little things here and there, but for the most part, you're gonna miss a lot of things that might be sitting on this floor. However, if I were to wrap this ground here, you will easily see every single grain of pebble, or I mean even sand, that might be sitting on this floor. Therefore, cleaning your surface area before installation is definitely essential. And this is something that doesn't make any sense to me at all. How some people, even professionals, choose to wrap their customer's car outside. Whether it's plenty of wind, particles, everything. It just blows my mind how some people do that. And they, again, they call themselves professionals. Anyways, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to wrapping the car. Now, you wanna make sure you have your wrap ready to go. So if there are any cuts that you need to make, just make sure you do that before applying the alcohol. We want to go for a clean installation. And that's why you want to make sure to put on the wrap pretty much as soon as the alcohol has been applied. Okay, so apply the alcohol on any clean rag. I'm going to be using a microfiber towel. And make sure to wipe every single area that will be wrapped, even the edges, corners, everywhere. And once every portion has been wiped clean, it'll finally be time for application. While the rest of the vinyl is still connected to its release liner, reverse the wrap so that the release liner or backing paper or sticky end, whatever you really call it by, is facing up. Place the trim on the vinyl, then peel a tiny corner of the wrap and stick it on the trim. From there, you wanna slowly grab the backing paper and slide it off, while at the same time, the trim is attaching itself to the vinyl. This process will help from any unwanted dust particles or any small fragments from attaching itself to the vinyl. Now, obviously you have to make sure your surroundings are clean as well. And again, don't do this outside. You will regret it. Now, some of you might be thinking, why am I wrapping the trims inside? Wouldn't it be easier just to wrap it on the car itself? Yes, it'd be a lot easier. You have no idea. The reason why I'm wrapping it inside is because these trims are detachable, which allows me to tuck the wrap around the trim. That's something I like to do with bumpers, trims, everything that I can tuck around. I see a lot of people, and yes, again, even professionals avoid the tuck method, which in turn will eventually lead to a wrap to start peeling. Also, more specifically, I'm doing my installation inside to avoid any particles whatsoever that are potentially in the garage to attach itself to the vinyl. And I especially don't want to be outside as any wind at all can and will ruin your installation. 
Okay, now let's quickly go over what you will need for the vinyl installation itself. Any sort of precision blade or exacto knife. Vinyl gloves, no squeegee needed for this specific installation. And lastly, a heat gun. Now if you don't have that, a blow dryer will work just as well. Finally, let's talk about the actual installation part of the vinyl. The first thing you want to do is find the creases or wrinkles on the wrap and straighten them out. In the beginning, you might have a lot of wrinkles in one general area. In which case, the easiest way to straighten those creases out is to remove a portion of that vinyl. Pull the wrap just enough to straighten out any wrinkles, then reattach the vinyl. It's as simple as that. Now, once you have taken the majority of the wrinkles out by lifting and reattaching, there will still be creases here and there on the trim. But don't worry about it, those are easier to take care of. You do not need to relift and attach half the vinyl for one or two wrinkles. All you need to do is find the crease or even an air bubble that could be stuck in the middle, lift that portion of the wrap, then push it down using your vinyl gloves. When it comes to the edges of the trim, all you need to do is slide your finger across the molding in order to bend the vinyl behind it. Now you're ready to reapply the vinyl behind the trim. You do not need to apply the wrap to the entire back side of the molding. Just a tiny attachment will be enough to hold the vinyl in place and prevent it from peeling. Now, for the tips of the trim, using your heat gun or blow dryer, apply a little amount of heat to that portion of the wrap. Then grab the vinyl and pull it down. This will allow you to form the wrap to the same shape of the tip of the molding. And this is something to note. If you come across a portion of your installation that is too difficult to attach because your vinyl is dry or is not shaping to your particular design, then apply heat to it just enough to permit it to loosen up and allow you to stretch the wrap to your desired frame. Once everything is complete, which has gotten rid of any wrinkles or air bubbles that could be stuck under the wrap, and you have tucked the vinyl behind the entire trim, then it's finally time to cut the access wrap that you do not want. From there, grab your blade and simply cut the portions you do not need. The back should not need any precision cutting, therefore it can be as sloppy or as clean as you want it to be. If your trim, however, has a rubber water guard like this one here, try to tuck the wrap in between the rubber piece and the trim as best as you can. Then simply just cut in between. That's it. Once all the cutting is finished, you can call it a day because you're finally done.
All right, all right. Thank you for watching my little demonstration and hopefully it was clear enough to understand. Now I do apologize if the vinyl creases or wrinkles were a bit hard to see. Unfortunately, black vinyl is a little hard to work with on camera. I'll try to use better lighting and maybe even film on different angles just to show a more clear example during installation. But for now, I just wanna thank everyone for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.